look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. It's Michelle and Hyun Jung. Hi. <laughs> so as we wait a few minutes, um, maybe for people to come in, we will, um, let me share this on my Facebook page. Okay. Do you want to share it on yours too? No. Why? Maybe later. Are you embarrassed? Huh? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you don't want people to maybe see it? No, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> We we'll see you later. Who do you think will? Who are you afraid that you might see it? Not nobody actually. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know. I was thinking like maybe you didn't want your family to see it, like my our, family? our Korean family to see oh, it. That's okay. Okay, I'm posting it on my Facebook page. Okay. Hi, Mary. See you in there. So um, we're gonna do this live stream at least for an hour. Okay. And we're going to talk about our story. And then also, I'm really hoping that people ask some questions or just share their stories or comments. And then that way we can actually have some sort of dialogue. So let me just share this on my page really quick. And we can see, you can see more people are coming in. Oh, um, cool. We're live now. Please come by and say hi. As soon as we started that live stream, Minnie was drinking like really loudly. Did you hear that? Our oh. dog, you'll see her. There's a toy right there that's driving me nuts. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so, um, you know, so we've decided basically, we, my name's Michelle, this is Hyun Jung. We live in Seattle together and Hyun Jung just moved in into Seattle how long ago? Maybe three months ago? Yeah, almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've lived in the States before, yes. but you live, you moved here from Korea. Mm -hmm. So Hyun Jung had a short stint in the United States, then went back to Korea for almost one year, one year, mm -hmm. and then decided to come back mm -hmm. because you have your green card. Yeah. Uh, because you called me. <laughs> really? That's why? Yeah. He said, what do you think? I come back. You know, so that's why I came back. I did. Th I did mm -hmm. say that, didn't I? You did, yeah, I did. <laughs> do you do you feel like I I made you come back? Um, part. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. No, I liked it. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. Cause I need somebody to do it, you know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops. I have this phone. Sorry, I have this on my phone so I can listen or see comments. So hi, Nick. Um, so our story starts, I guess. I'll tell our story really quickly in a nutshell, and then we can go into detail about it. And um, so I was born in Korea. Mm -hmm. Then when I was like six months old, I, okay. Oh, Mary says, so interested in how you found your Korean family. Okay, so uh, I was born in Busan, and then mm -hmm. uh, my parents are just like Missouri, Midwestern folks, adopted me and raised me in a very rural part of Missouri and um, near Kansas City. And then when I was a teenager, I started going to these Korean heritage camps near my house. Um, I shouldn't say near my house, but like it was in Oklahoma. It wasn't Holt affiliated, but, um, but that's what we did because of proximity. And then when I was 18, I decided to go to Korea. And I did this because one of my friends did it the year before. Okay. And um, he actually did a birth family search and it was unsuccessful. And when I went, I just wanted to go to Korea because I was curious. And you have an opportunity when you're in Korea to look at your file. And so I saw my file and I remember I said to the woman, we were in Seoul, I said, she was a young woman too. She was maybe like 21 or 22. She was really young. And I said, can you find my birth mother? And they said, no, like, you have to go back to the States. You have to do a search. And then when we find, if we find your birth mother, then you can come back. Oh. And I remember I was like 18. I just finished high school and I started bawling. Like I was like, <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, why I'm here? Like, this is like, it, this is crazy. Um, and so I had a kind of an unconventional, you have to think this is like the nineties. So it was a little unconventional. Um, the social worker, I don't, she was so young. I don't think she had ever met anyone like, like you. really, because when you go to Holt, it's really crazy. It's awesome. Like your family has an opportunity to send pictures over. So I was really overwhelmed. Like I had never really, 
even though I was very curious about, you know, Korean family, I had never really had a strong desire to find you because I was always nervous that mm -hmm. it might not happen. Right. So, or it might not be good. So, um, but when you go to the office, you go, you open your file and my mom, Sharon sent all of these pictures of me like growing up. So I've like looked at the file and I see like all these pictures of like me when I was like two and three and four in hopes that like, if our family, if our mother, if our birth, my birth mother would have come by, then she would have seen it. So that, so that was like, oh, I was already like crying. And then anyway, so the woman, so I left that office thinking, okay, so it's not in like the universe plan mm -hmm. for me to find you. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Like mm -hmm. I just got to move on. And I, um, a couple days later, I got a phone call. Yeah. She had contacted, mm -hmm. uh, our birth mother, our mother, our Korean mother, our mother. I don't know. You know what? I'm just gonna say mother for our mother and my mom for Sharon. Okay. <laughs> so it's just really just, Many yeah, too many. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so like two days before I left Korea, I met you. Yeah. And that was crazy because um, our story was really, um, in a nutshell, our, our parents were married. Our father was working where? Abroad. Yeah, he was like a, he was he a sure. fisherman? I'm not sure actually. Okay. But what I know is that um, he was working in a ship, big ship. That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she had already had you. Mm -hmm. She already had our oldest sister and mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And then when she got pregnant with me, she um, relinquished me right in the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she told one sister, one of her sisters? Yeah, at the time she was staying with a sister, her sister mm -hmm. in the hospital. And nobody came to visit her except the except sister. So then she uh so then when she told our father what did she say did she say i died yeah you were born dead yeah and then when he returned mm -hmm. uh she they got pregnant right away yeah i think so right <laughs> yeah like because yeonjang is only years she's only like a year and two months younger than me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I remember the story was like as soon as they started um, as soon as they like he came home and they were like mourning the loss of a child granted for different reasons um, they got pregnant right away with our my young our youngest sister so this whole time like I have my Korean name is Park, Park Hyun Suk mm -hmm. and um, I always kind of had hoped and thought that like our mother had named me, but she didn't. So social workers named me and, um, but it turns out it's all very similar. Yeah. That was really interesting, right? Hyunmi, Hyunjung and Hyunsu. And then Yeonja. Yeonja. So yeah. if you're familiar with Korean culture, a lot of the siblings have similar names. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I was calling like my mom and dad in Missouri, like freaking out and being like, oh, I don't know what to do. And I still have my diary. Remember I got yeah, out my diary right, from that time. Together. I should have cut it for this. Shoot, what did I do with it? <laughs> I wasn't thinking. Uh, it was pretty basic anyway though, cause I was 18. But um, I remember when we met each other. So I was sitting in this hotel and I was sitting in this conference room and I was waiting, like the whole people were there. I had an, the person that we were with the tour group there. And then um, I just remember we kept looking at the door and finally the door opened Oh! <laughs> and she ran in and Korean people are so intense. They give you these like crazy, like really passionate hugs. And they're like, you know, like this. And I, I couldn't even see her because she just came at me. That's mm -hmm. what I remember. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then eventually I saw our father come in and then I remember seeing like three little heads and it was you. <laughs> Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. So, what, but the thing that I think is really interesting is that, you know, I was like totally freaked out. Like I was thinking, oh, who are these people? Do I look like these people? You know, like, do I, you know, but what did you think? Did, did you think I looked like you? And yeah. Uh, um, so we have four sisters and that we, uh, every, I say that, we all look different. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, when I saw you for the first time, the first impression was like, wow, she looks like me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I think that's because uh, um, we, you and I didn't have double eyelids. Mm. That's why. Because all of my family has big double eyelids. Oh, really? Yeah, double They eyelids. They do? Yeah. Now we have a kind of. <laughs> it's age. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's gravity. <laughs> Oh, but I'm kind of skipping ahead because I'm a little, little nervous. Um, so basically, my our mother had kept me a secret, right? Mm -hmm. And she was able to do that because our father was working away mm -hmm. at sea. Mm -hmm. And then nobody came to the hospital, so it was easy to say that. So was she just depressed? Do you think, or alone, mm -hmm. overwhelmed? Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I were a boy, though, she probably would have kept me. Probably. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So she had to tell. So. She had to tell our father. Mm -hmm. Do you ever? Did you ever get any insight on what that was like? No, I don't have any. I, I don't have any. So what happened to you, though? How did you find out? Find out what? About me? It's just at the day. So, but she had to call you, right? Or who called you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I was in my university. It was 1998 summer, uh, July, and then I was in, uh, I was in my dormitory, and Yeon Yeon my youngest sister, uh, called me, and she said, "Hey, <laughs> hey, sister, we have another sister." And then I said, "What? What do you mean?" <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't really understand what she was talking about, and and then. Uh, my my father was uh, next next to her, I guess, and then he was like, "Let me talk to her," <laughs> and then he said exactly the same thing, like, "You have another sister." And then she came to visit us. So, what are you talking about? You know? Mm -hmm. and then he said, "Anyway, you have to come home to feed the dog." To feed the dog? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Why they were okay. going to see you? You know? So I came back home. And then at that day, they came to Seoul to see you, but uh, they couldn't with you, so they came back. Yeah, we and missed each other. It mm -hmm. was like ships in the night. Like we were just going on with our tour, mm -hmm. but you guys came up and we mm -hmm. missed each other. And then we met on the weekend. Yeah. Like Saturday. Mm -hmm. maybe? Something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But were you shocked? Were you mad? Were you sad? Were you, I mean. I, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, actually. I couldn't believe that. It was so like shocked. a drama, you know? Not it's not like a shocking actually. It's just like what's this? Is it is it weird? <laughs> you know? And then so I can't really feel something. Mm -hmm. But you say that all the time. She says that all the time. Yeah, that's like oh, I feel nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like are you excited? I feel nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, um, but like do you remember one time you told me you were like, um, I don't know if the, not jealous, because that's not the word, but like you were like, you had wished you had grown up in America. Mm. Do you remember yeah. saying that to me? Yeah. Am I putting on the spot? I mean, <laughs> because I basically like the reason I think this is interesting is because there's so many adoptees out there who have no birth family information. Mm -hmm. Or, um, or maybe they don't. Maybe they do have birth family information, but they don't have a connection, like a real connection with their sisters. Or mm -hmm. they definitely don't have their sibling living with them. You know what I mean? So, but for the people who are, who are out there who don't have any connection to their birth family, they wonder about their birth mother, their birth father, and then they say, "I wonder if I have any siblings." And then I just so we never have the opportunity to really hear from siblings, like the shock or like the the feelings that they felt. I mean, were you angry at our parents? No, I felt pity, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Was it your question? You were talking about... Yeah, okay, so I'm going... I'm sorry. Like, I keep bouncing. Um, did you ever... Like, one time you told me that you felt oh, yeah. like you wanted... That you wished that you had been raised in the United States. Do you, remember, do you yeah. remember telling me that? Can you talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, you should be honest because I think a lot of, uh, it wasn't like I, I, um, I was jealous or something because I want to uh, let you know that um, maybe growing up here is much better than growing up in Korea, you know. Why did you think that? Well, because, you know, we are poor and then we have four, uh, three, three daughters. So we shared everything and then we didn't really have some toys, you know, uh, allowance. allowance. Mm -hmm. and, and then um, living in Korea is not easy. You know, there are so many people, so really competitive, you know. So I think it was good for you to grow up here. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you think that, like, what do you think now that you know me and like, how, how are we different as women? I mean, I feel like the opportunities are different for women in Korea. Mm -hmm. Can you, since you've seen mm -hmm. it both, can you, do you see what I'm saying? Can you talk about that? Like, I feel like women are, are very quiet in Korea. Maybe not. I think that's just, Depends on people. On the people? Mm. I don't know though. I feel like you're, you're very, you have to weigh a certain amount. You can't be divorced. You can't oh, be like. kinds of things. Yeah, like there, I mean, can you talk about that? Well, just, just conservative, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't think a lot of Americans like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, like, I think like, um, because there have been lots of times in my life where I've been like really sad that I didn't grow up in Korea, you know, because, oh. because I, talk about that. yeah, well, it, because, you know, I grew up in rural Missouri and I don't regret it, but I don't regret it at all, actually. But the truth is like, it was, it was really hard because I was the only Asian kid in my school. Wait, there was one Cambodian guy in my class and like one Korean adoptee who was like five years younger. So I saw her like, you know, I knew of her. Um, and I got made fun of a lot. And I think that motivated me actually to be the person I am. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, the thing that I, the thing that I, in a in good way or a bad way? Both. I mean, um, I was super, um, super motivated to get out of Missouri. Okay. <laughs> and then I ended up staying in Missouri. I ended up working in Missouri. But at the time, I just, I was really, um, my confidence was broken, you know. What? Yeah. Because when someone tells you, like, being different is not really good, mm -hmm. you know, you you either, like, That's you really, break down. This is not Korea. <laughs> but it sounds like Korea. <laughs> sounds like Korea. <laughs> Maybe it's everywhere. I, I think for me, because... Um, it's so hard to be to not have anyone who can relate to you. Mm -hmm. So my parents, they were awesome, but they also had no idea what I was going through. And, you know, even little things like you get older and you want to date, you want to go out and have fun. And, you know, some boys or girls, whatever, you know, don't want to date the Korean, <laughs> you know, or like they find blonde hair, blue eyes, prettier or something. That's you know. sad. <laughs> but you do it. All Koreans do that. Oh, like they say, like all Koreans are so obsessed with like American, like blonde hair, blue eyes, like mm, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Because they look like dolls. dolls. <laughs> I've heard it. So I've heard it from you. So, um, so anyway, so it's just really difficult to to do to sometimes to be different. So no matter what you're, however you're different, sometimes it's just really difficult. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like um, in America, it's really important to raise strong girls. And like in Korea, like some people feel the pressure to like have plastic surgery or lose weight or, yep. you know, all those things. And so I, I don't I mean, people do it here, but and that's OK. But I also feel like there's a lot of acceptance, you know, too. So I don't know. What do you think, like being in, in the United States? Good. <laughs> okay. How has your life changed? Uh, actually, I can't really feel something has changed. Mm. Because now it's Korea and um, USA are not really different, I think. 
So how are you different? Me? I don't know. Did I, <laughs> did I change? I don't know. You said, know. Now you're getting like super camera shy. You said you were more brave. Yeah, but once I was really brave in my 20s. And then, you know, I changed to be shy for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm going back. You think? Mm -hmm. You got your driver's license? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. What do you think about Seattle? Oh, it's a really nice city, I think. I love it. So. The weather is really good, and then people are really nice. Then there are so many beautiful places to visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Do you have a? Do you have? Um, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of like you know some big differences for people because all the people who are watching they might want to know like, what's it like for you to be in the United States living with your birth sister. Mm that you didn't grow up with? Mm -hmm. well, actually, um, I feel like I have the best friend in my life now. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting you no. to say that. That's oh, sweet. That's okay. No, stop it. Stop it. Yeah, okay, oh. no, that, that's what I've always um, been thinking. Really? Why? Mm -hmm. Uh, because um, yesterday I think I told you right. Um, we uh, I I have two more sisters, but when we when we were young, we didn't really hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. So we always uh, fought and had arguments. <laughs> I think <laughs> everybody does, right? Yeah. yeah. So even though they were sisters, so maybe now um, we are better because um, we hang out with our nephew and niece. Mm -hmm. So so when when you have a kid, you know, so all people can be get together can they get together. Rally around the kids, yeah, right? Yeah. So, Everything is about kids. So yeah. now we are having fun together, but when I was young, we didn't hang out at all actually. Really? Mm -hmm. At all. <laughs> but see when I saw you obviously you were always together. Because you saw pictures. Yeah. That's why. Well, and every time I come back, because I've gone to Korea four oh, times. Because, so of you, you be. because of you. <laughs> because of you. We got together. Because you, got, you, yeah. you were forced to be together. It was like a holiday, you know. Oh, my God, Misha K. And then, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's go back home. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. What do you think the hardest thing has been? Or the most challenging thing? Here or? I don't know. Just like us knowing each other. Because we've known each other now for half our lives. Mm-hmm. Or half my life, so more than half your wow. life. Wait, less than half your life, because I'm younger. <laughs> <laughs> but half, half of my life, because yeah. we met when I was 18. So mm -hmm. now I've known you for half my life. But this has really changed in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Like it really like accelerated from like zero to 60 pretty quickly. What do you think that, I mean, I guess, what do you think the most challenging things are about reconnecting like we have and oh. maintaining that relationship i think that's the language language mm -hmm. because uh, when we do you remember that when we met you for the first time we couldn't really communicate with you mm -hmm. right so um later when i could speak english uh we reconnected right mm -hmm. and then but still I couldn't understand you well. When? Like when you first moved to the United... Yeah. When you moved to Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I needed my husband to... To help. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but then you just got used to... You just got used to our voices, though, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, let's see. So Graham's in there and says, Michelle, do you have adoptive family siblings? How is your relationship with them different or the same as your relationship with Hyunjung. So actually, the interesting thing is that I, do, I don't have any siblings. Uh, my parents stopped with me only because they wanted more children, but they had a, a kind of a scary 
foster situation, um, or I shouldn't say, it scared them, right? So there was a child that they really wanted to adopt, but it just didn't work out. And when that happened, they were, uh, I think they just got scared. And so they were like, we're, our family's complete with me. <laughs> so for better or for worse. And so I never had any siblings, um, which honestly, it kind of made it easier for me. I mean, I don't really know what it's, actually, I shouldn't say it made me, I shouldn't say it made it easier for me because I don't have a comparison, but it made it easy for me to like kind of go full steam ahead. You know what I mean? I just embrace you as my fan, as my family. Um, and then with my, um, with my parents, they were really excited about, about you and oh, yeah. about our sisters. And they were like, um, kind of like the more the merrier, I think. Um, and then my mom, it's really interesting too, because my mom, Sharon, really wanted to meet our mother. Do you remember that? Yeah. How did, how did um, our parents feel about my parents? Oh, she, our mom um, talk, talked about your mom, Sharon, a lot. And then she said, oh, she's so nice, so really? sweet. I love her. <laughs> you know, she's like my American sister, you know. And then she really appreciated that, you know. That's nice. What yeah. about our father? I um our father doesn't really talk about something, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's kinda like my dad too, because he was like, I really support you and I really want you to I want everyone to get along and be happy. Mm -hmm. But he was like when our when our mother came to San Francisco a few years ago because I found out I had a, we have a, a we share an aunt who uh, lived in San Francisco and she ended up, she died a few years ago, but our mother came to visit her on her, like kind of like for a month, like she was going to see her for a month. Mm -hmm. and so my mom, Sharon was like, well, if your birth mother's coming, then we have to, then I have to go. And so my dad was kind of like, eh, you girls have fun. <laughs> and, um, but uh, he hasn't really had the same interest as my mom. So when my mom, basically, I got to San Francisco before my mom. You didn't come. So, mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry. The tragedy in all this was that our mother came, our Korean mother came to San Francisco to take care of her sick sister, our aunt. The day she got to San Francisco, our aunt died. It was kind of like a Korean drama. Yeah, seriously, yeah. So then I had already uh, booked my flight, so I was coming out. And so we stayed with uh, a friend of our aunt, of our aunt's. Mm -hmm. Her name was Sun. Mm -hmm. So we stayed at Sun's house. And, your, and our mother stayed there for, and for a month. Anyway, so I show up. I say hi to everybody. I grab, you know, our mother. And I go to the airport to pick up my mom. And I didn't tell my mom that she was in the back seat, <laughs> that our mother was in the back seat. Oh. So like my mom gets in the car and suddenly there's our mother. <laughs> so she's like, oh. I think I think that's the best way to do it. Because mm -hmm. if I had told Sharon, if I had told mm -hmm. my mom that like my old mom was in the wow, car, my mom would have freaked out. She would have cried the whole way. Oh. You know, that's how oh. she is. So then oh. It was kind of funny. So I have my mom, my birth mom, in the back seat of like this big rental car. It was like this big Tahoe that we had rented. Was, well, I don't know why I got a Tahoe. Anyway, and those two literally they couldn't talk to one another, but they just kept like doing this, and then they would say stuff, but they clearly weren't able to actually understand <laughs> each other. And that was like a, an hour ride home back to the house. Like it was kind of nuts. And they they had a blast. So that's the first time they met. And then when you guys came out in October. They visited mm -hmm. visited from Korea in oh, Seattle. Same same year. No, that was like our uh, our emo died in. Was it 2012? Yeah, 2012. Yeah. Okay. Then and then year. so then my mom came out again. Mm. When you brought our nephew oh, and our yeah. mother, so Juan, who is our year. nephew, and it's Yun Jung's son. So it's I mean there are a lot of missing there are a lot of moving parts. <laughs> Um, so Annette says, my daughter is 16 
and a Korean adoptee and wants to do a birth family search, do you feel at 16 you would have been emotionally ready? You should answer, I think. You know, I think that's if she wants to, then yeah, then she's probably emotionally ready. I mean, what's the difference between 16 and 18? <laughs> really? And also, um, if you have time to prep for it, then I think that you have a lot of co good conversations that you can have. I mean, I think that, don't you think that our relationship has changed a lot over yeah. the years? Like it's mm -hmm. had ups and downs. I mean, in the sense that it's had really, like where we've been really active and chatted, and then we've had these long periods where mm -hmm. we haven't talked. Mm -hmm. like, there were times in my life when I thought we would maybe never talk again. Mm -hmm. That's all because of language, right? Yeah. yeah. Because at that time I was uh, I was writing emails to you, but it took long time for me, like what all, uh, all day long. Mm -hmm. So later, uh, you know, just I stopped. I guess mm -hmm. not really stopped, but well, because yes. you're kind of repeating the same things over. Like I've taken Korean before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I took it every day for two years in college, but I still didn't know how to type on the keyboard. So, you know, I could speak it, but then I'm saying like, how was the weather? The weather is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like not really that helpful, you know, in terms of like having a, a good dialogue. Um, but to answer Annette's question, I think that at 16, you could be emotionally ready. I mean, Yeonjung would have been, 16 and a half oh, yeah. when she found out about me. Do you think any of our sip like any of our sisters were Like what kind of emotions did they have? Did you ever talk about it? Not really. No, we don't talk. Is that a Korean thing? Or is that maybe a our family thing? Really? <laughs> I don't know. Did you ever did you ever feel though that something was going on like when like all through your childhood because I was born in the fall mm -hmm. everyone else was born Summer in the summer, oh, no, except no, no, no. well, Yanjung was born in the winter. Mm -hmm. In January, yeah. Was it January? Mm -hmm. Oh shoot, I thought it was December. Do you do you remember anything about um, that time, like growing up as a kid, or like I thought you said that you may have remembered something, like maybe our mother being pregnant with me, or maybe relinquishing oh. me. Yeah, when I I, I remember that. Uh, one night I woke up uh, and then it was really dark outside and I couldn't find mom. So, where's mom? You know? And then uh, my neighbor somehow came to our house and then she told me, oh, your mom came to, uh, your, mom, your mom went to hospital to deliver your sister. So I thought maybe that would be you, but I'm not sure. I know. I see. I I think that it couldn't be me. Couldn't. Well, I, because only because you would have been so young. You'd have been three, maybe. Mm. Two and a half or three. Maybe it was you. Right? Maybe yeah. You were maybe it was young. Young. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, Carrie says, dang, I didn't know the story about your aunt dying before your birth mother arrived. That's tragic. Well, she arrived. Was, this is even more tragic because she arrived <laughs> and uh, the women at my at our Emo's church were with her and they said, hang on, your sister's coming. Your sister's coming. So our mother showed up and literally they held hands for like. Did they? Yeah. And she couldn't open her eyes, so they just talked for like oh. 45 minutes or an hour. I mean, like she couldn't do anything. Our our mother was talking to her. Mm -hmm. But then after like an hour, I think within the hour, they, they, she died. Oh. But Korean people are kind of tragic by nature in the sense that I know so many Korean people who like just do not talk to each other. It's so funny. <laughs> it's true. Like it's always like this. Like I have friends who like have, have who are Korean who have Korean like Korean Korean parents, and they say like, "Oh, my mom hasn't seen her sister in thirty years," and I'm like, "What? That's not normal." But that's like kind of normal for Korean people. Uh, for some people, I think. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot, clearly. I don't know. Let me see if there are any other questions. So did you, was there ever, what were some of the phases that you went through? Like, did you ever get angry for the situation or did you ever 
were you ever sad about it or were you ever happy? Just because it can't just be all happy. Like it can't be like, oh, we're so happy. We've reconnected. Our life is perfect. Like it's had to have been kind of like this, right? Sort of about what? About us finding each other or about oh. the way or about the way things happen, you know, like the way, you know, like you guys grew up in Korea and I was over I've never here. been sad or angry about that. I was so happy and then just it was like amazing. <laughs> 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 but I thought you would say stuff like to me that you would be like something would make you pissed off. Like you would say, I was so pissed off because I couldn't get the truth or something. Oh, that was about mom, right? Maybe. I think. Oh, Were you mad at her? Just a little bit, I don't know how to explain, but. It's okay, I mean, <laughs> she's not watching, <laughs> but also. <laughs> She'll watch it later. She'll watch it later, but she won't have any idea what you're saying. She will ask me. <laughs> well, I it's, mean, a, it's okay, though. I mean, mm -hmm. um, if it's truthful, it could help somebody, you know. So, so. I kept asking her, like, uh, why did you do that, you know? And then she, her answer is always, like, I don't know. Yeah. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Just, I thought I couldn't do it. You know? Okay. But see, I'm okay with that. Are you? Yeah, because I feel like every like you never know what's going on in somebody's mind or in somebody's life, and if they're lonely or they're in a kind of a weird situation or if they're depressed, you can't mm -hmm. you know that's not her fault. She had a lot of circumstances. Plus, like I always feel like um, my parents were pretty good about being very positive about my birth family. I mean, we had no idea that they were out there really, but my mom and dad would always say, you know, that is such a big sacrifice for a family. So for someone to be able to see that they wanted a better life for you, that's like a really unconditional love. So that was how I was raised. So I was never angry about, angry with them. Sometimes I'd be angry because I wanted more out of my life. You know, mm -hmm. like I wanted to be, it's we, It's a weird feeling to be Korean looking and having all the world's expectation of you to kind of be Korean. And it's, but when you, when you're, when you're an adoptee, you have no, the culture that you identify with is not how people, ex, it's not the expectation from people. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like when I went back to Korea for the first time, it was also really like um, overwhelming because I didn't fit in there either. So you kind of are like this, you're in this like weird space, you know? So I don't know. So that was a little, diff that's, so that was the only thing that I would get mad about because it was like, if I wanted to learn anything about Korean culture, I had to learn it. Mm -hmm. And Korean people for better or for worse, they always are like, oh, you should learn Korean. Do you like Korean food? And I always say, it, like when I've had the opportunity to talk to birth mothers, I always say like, you have a long time to learn English so that if your child ever comes back for you, you will know the language. Because I, if I had known that I was going to meet you, maybe I would have taken Korean as a kid or maybe my parents would have done that, you know? So now I, I don't know very much Korean at all. And I'm so embarrassed. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what is this? You have all these oh, notes. Yeah I, yeah, I was looking for something. I I wrote about our story here. And then actually I wrote about what um, our mom said. Let me, while you look at that, let me read some of the, the comments, okay? Okay. Here's the thing. I didn't. I didn't see all these comments because they're not showing up uh, correctly oh. in, in this thing. So I'm sorry about that. Colleen wants to know the birth order. So how many years between your sisters? We're all about a year and a half, probably, right? Hyunmi is like one year. One year? Younger than young, uh, older than me. Just one year? Yes. How's that like possible? A, uh. Why is it? <laughs> it's possible. So like um, 19th okay. in June. So I'm 24th. Okay. 
Elizabeth will go back. She said, how did you meet? I didn't get the beginning. Um, I'll go back to that in a second. It was kind of happenstance, really. But I went back to Korea on a Birthland tour, not with Holt at the time, but Holt was there when we met. So I went to the office, look at my file, and then a social worker reached out and contacted my birth mother, who then had to tell my birth father that about me. And then they together had to tell my sisters, who two of them were in college. Um, Kathy says, thank you for sharing. I'm at a point of trying to figure out when the right time is to share my son's full birth family facts with them. They are 15 and 13. Kathy, I think you should do it now because the one thing that my mom, Sharon, messed up with, I think, and it's not her fault, but I was, I felt like kind of shocked and kind of mad. So right before we went to Korea, my mom whips out this really old letter from like 1984 or something. I mean, I was born in the 70s, but she she had written to Holt um, Children's Services or something and asked for information about my birth family. So at the time, they wrote back and they said uh, that my birth parents were married and that I had two sisters. So my mom sat on that information until I was 18 and packing my suitcase to go to Korea. And I, I remember she was like, I have something to tell you. And she was like really serious. And I was like, okay. So she gave me this letter and she's like, she said, I'm sorry. I couldn't give this to you sooner. I tried a million times to give this to you, but I couldn't because it made her cry like every time. So she couldn't do it. So she came to me like literally as I was packing my suitcase. And I remember I was like, I had to get on a plane. Like, why would you do that? So, so I knew about you, but like only like a couple of days before I went to Korea. Wow. So I would say, Kathy, if there's a way that you can share that with them sooner, I think it's better because then it can kind of, even if it's hard for you. And I never, I mean, I'm not like mad at my mom, but I was always, I was always like, why? Why would she? But I know my mom, she has like the best intentions. It was just kind of like, huh? So, so maybe that could backfire against people. I mean, I don't know, like some parents that might backfire against, you know, some parents like the kids might be really upset. Um, let's see. Oh, my cousin Jessica's in there. Hi. Uh, Mary says, yes, Korean looking and raised in the USA is very difficult. And I will say this, I've also, um, with all due respect to Korean people, I have also had experience, bad experiences with Korean people. So like when I went to college, I was like, I'm gonna be Korean, I'm gonna take Korean classes, I'm gonna join all these Korean groups. And then when I did, some of them were kind of crappy to me because I wasn't Korean, Korean. I wasn't Korean, Korean. So like we would be around and they would be, they would speak Korean and they would, like if we would, you know, we were like 19 and 20, I mean 21. And they would be like, make you, you know, so <laughs> they would want me to call them like Opa and like Uni, and I didn't, I wasn't raised that way. So it felt very, so I would do it, but it felt very awkward. And then one time this girl just like was really mean to me and she said, you're so whitewashed, you know, like you, you're not culturally, you're not diverse at all. And I was like, well, first of all, I never said I was culture, like I never said I wasn't whitewashed because I have white parents. And second of all, I was actually born in Korea and this chick was born in Kansas. <laughs> so I was like, you know, let's, and I was like, I have friends of all colors. And at the time, this, this little group, they were all like um, hanging out. And this is so bad. They were hanging out in the science library, you know, all together speaking Korean. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really, who's more diverse, me or you? Like, I just, so the thing is, it hurt my feelings. I'll, it really hurt my feelings. And that's when I decided, okay, I am who I am. Like, I can't change it. So I'm not necessarily, I'm Korean looking, I'm Korean born, I like Korean stuff, but I'm a Missourian and I'm, you know, who I am. So I'm an adoptee. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, Nikki says, this is why it's so important for us adoptive parents to keep their children connected with their culture at every turn and opp opportunity. Yeah, you do? Mm -hmm. Why do you agree with that? Um, <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's their root. So at some point, uh, your children 
um, maybe your children might want to get back, get yeah. back, you know? I think for anything, it's like, at least it's good for confidence. So that when someone does something stupid, they can at least have knowledge, right? So like when I remember when I was in school and the teacher would be like, where's 38th parallel? And I'd be like, what? They would look at me, you know? Or like, um, or like just having confidence in like food and not being weirded out. Like the first time you see something weird, like squid or kimchi or something that's different that you didn't grow up eating, right? But like, I don't know, like um, sometimes just having the confidence of that, mm -hmm. like no, like knowing stuff, like so, so you don't feel so ignorant. Like when I was a kid and the first time I had Korean food, I was like, this is so weird and it smells <laughs> gross, funny. Right? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, who eats kimchi? It is so gross. It smells like garlic, you know? Um, but like, so I can only imagine how awkward I felt like when I was like 14 but thinking about that being like 30, you know, or 35 or 40, like never having any experience with Korean culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the same time, I don't think you should make your kids Korean, like, because they're never gonna fit in with, I shouldn't say never. I was never gonna fit in with Korean culture. Like I was, I'm never gonna be like a Korean Korean. You can't. Yeah, right? Yeah. So that's it. Just like when you said, I'm so frustrated because I can't speak English, English well, yeah. and I said, but you can't speak English well. And then I said, but you're never going to be like America. Yeah. Yeah. So we just have to accept it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just accept who you are. Can't change it. Um, let's see. Oh, Annie's in there. Our friend Annie's in there. Um, Oh yeah, Annie, connect me. Annie says, I feel like connecting you for a panel talk with adoptive friends and families of Greater Seattle, Microsoft. Annie, Annie Cole, our, our friend Annie, the hula hoop. Oh, and Annie, who's been here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jennifer, oh, her daughter, their grade, is starting to get really annoyed when other children stare or ask why we don't look alike. It is usually a very innocent curiosity on the child's part. But I'm wondering if you have some suggestions of quick, polite answers. My heart breaks every time it happens because I know it bothers her. Mm. Sorry, I couldn't oh, understand, you couldn't understand that. that. You know, I don't know. It's so hard because that is a part of it, right? So that's like why people, that's why sometimes adoptees have so much, you know, it's kind of like a burden in a way because they, I don't have a good answer for that. You know, the thing is that, Everyone is different and unique in their own way. And this is her way of being unique. And one day, this is gonna sound like a total parent, one day she'll appreciate it and she'll it'll be character building for her. But I mean, she's gonna be different. You know, even if she was in a Korean school, she would be different because of her family makeup. You know, I, the thing that I think that I would stress is that it's not about being a Korean adoptee in, for me, right? Everyone's different. For me, it was not about being a Korean adoptee with other Koreans, because Korean people intimidated me, too. It was about being a Korean adoptee with other adoptees, right? So, Jumi is in there, and um, I, grew, I grew up, I knew her. Oh, I saw the picture. You did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so when we were kids, we met in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was probably fourteen or fifteen, and she was probably the same, close to the same age. Uh, and we were both adopted, and it was meeting people like her uh, that gave me confidence. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize at the time it was giving me confidence. Mm -hmm. Like I had no idea. But looking back, I can say, okay, being around other adoptees like made made it better for me, I think. Gave me more confidence, like I'm not the only one out there. I know I'm not the only one out there because I've met other people. Let me ask you something. So this is gonna be a weird question. Um, do you think, so one thing that I experienced in, like in our reunion story is that I also kind of felt rejected after I met you. At the same time. Like, by what? By who? because 
when I came back to Korea, mm -hmm. no one still knew about me. Do you remember? Can do you remember that? Oh, I think my mom was so embarrassed. Yeah. About that. Yeah. Because like. <laughs> because she kept she kept the secret for twenty years, so it's not easy to reveal. Mm -hmm. Right. But even when we went back in 2009, do you remember what happened? 2009? So, like, we went back to Korea in 2009, and I wanted, I had a connection at KBS, and they wanted huh? to do a story. Do you remember this? No. So, um, that's the news station, one of the news stations. And I, and I remember I asked if we could do it, and our, and our mother got oh. really upset do you remember yeah not really upset but she didn't want to do it right mm -hmm. because she'd have to tell her church friends that was or that's what i remember like then she would have to tell her church friends the truth are you nervous because she'll watch it <laughs> because but and remember i said i said oh if she doesn't want to do it then like i'm not ashamed of me like she shouldn't be ashamed of me she shouldn't be ashamed of this and but then, she is anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So do you think that her friends know about me now? My friends? Her friends. All oh, her friends. Like her church friends. Like how do how does that story evolve now? Like what does she do people know? I don't, I don't really know about that, but uh, two thousand nine at the wedding. So that was some, different because we had a double wedding. Yes, yeah, some of some of uh, the church people came, so I think people know about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with it, but I mean that was hard for me, like it, at the beginning, because I was like, oh, it feels like a double rejection, a little bit, you know. Oh. <laughs> well, it's because not nothing like a rejection, I think. Just she felt shame, you know. Yeah, because she's the one who did something bad, so yeah, but. I think with, so the story on this side, you know, like adoption's wonderful and great. And, you know, it's like all like lovey, lovey, like, you know, so it's like everyone here, like you can't hide it because most families don't look the same. So, you, you know, if you adopt a child, most likely that child does not look like you. Right. So you can't, mm -hmm. you can't. So you're like, we adopted a kid from Korea. It's great. But like, so when you go to Korea and you think like, oh, I'm going to have all the answers. I'm going to be embraced by everybody. We're going to reconnect. And then you find out like, like 10 years later, <laughs> people still haven't told you about, you know, then I realize like, oh, okay. So this is not just like we're easing into it to let everybody know. This is like people may never know about me. Which sucks because, like, I'm a journalist and I talk a lot in America. <laughs> so, like, if they have friends, if she has friends in America, you know, she might be like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. But she has some Facebook friends here. So. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Shoot. It's okay, though. You think she's okay? Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure about that. <laughs> but, oh, you know what? Um, you know what? One thing I think is really interesting is that, um, no matter, no matter your situation at all, like, um, even though I, I feel really blessed that I have you in my life, I, it's not, people sometimes think, like, if you have a connection with your birth family, that you must have, like, all this closure, or that you are totally happy, or whatever, but it's still hard, like, it's still hard to get information, because I don't think Korean people share information. Yeah, I agree. Like, sometimes I feel like you can't even get information. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. I mean, like, anything. Like, you could, like it could be about your health. Like, oh, does so-and-so have diabetes? I don't know. What? But they're taking insulin? Oh, yeah, maybe. Because in Korea... <clears throat> Our faces are really important. Maybe it's the most important thing in our 
culture. Face like pride? Um, um, kind of, yeah. So, so anything, uh, um, I don't have to say it. Hmm. Anything anyway, that's like not necessarily perfect or? Mm -hmm. Or oh. just not really positive, maybe? Like things, it's just people anything wanna show something good, something great. So they wanna show off, you know? Mm -hmm. So if, if it's not uh, really good to share, then they just don't wanna do it. Whereas, like, we like to talk about everything. Do I make you uncomfortable? Because I, I talk so much about everything. No, I'm okay. Really? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad at me? Because you remember when I said, we're going to do a Facebook Live with Holt? Because I told Holt, I was like, yeah, I was like, my sister's on board. And then I told you, and you're like, what? It's live? <laughs> Are you mad? No, I'm okay. <laughs> really? Um, let's see. Let me read some of the other things. Oh, Mary is in there. She's talking to Jennifer. So kids ask because they're curious. You owe it to your daughter to teach her not to be annoyed, but to be kind and forthcoming to try to educate her classmates as best as she can. My daughter experienced questions on her ethnicity because I am Korean. We have to have a bit of, of humor. Love this forum. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that too, but man, you do get kind of annoyed. I Well, I would get annoyed. And like even when I was growing up, people would say, like I had this one really good friend, and I remember she had a friend. So I was like, it was like 10 years old. So I was over at my friend's house, and then she brought over a friend. And that friend was kind of like mean to me. And I was like, mm -hmm. and I remember my friend Jessica turned to her and said, be nice to her, she's adopted. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I... So I went home oh. and I was like, I don't think I like this. You know, I told my parents because I was like, what does that mean? Like is adopted, is adoption bad? You know, I had no idea. So that means, so what that meant was that at some point her parents had said something like, be nice to Michelle because she's adopted. I mean, you know, I, I would love for people to be nice to me no matter what. So what, whatever the reason. But I remember I felt like, oh, that's really, yeah. that hurt, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth says, I have that feeling that Korean people are ashamed that the Western countries take care of their people. Is that correct? Yeah. So this day, I think it's difficult to adapt from Korea, right? Because we, we made so many rules mm -hmm. now. That's all because uh, our government doesn't like that idea, you know? So we are like selling kids or something. So, so look bad, mm -hmm. that, that looks bad, so. About saving face too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I and the thing is on that, I would, you know, I would, um, I would rec recommend talking to someone from Holt because obviously adoptions are still going strong. You know, there are still people adopting from Korea and, you know, I think culturally speaking, you can say, on behalf of like what kind of like your friends say about adoption, you know, but um, but like they're experts is what I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> so I, um, but yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely a conversation. Um, and Linda says, oh, this is very informative. Thank you for your honesty. Um, oh, Annie says, was the double wedding both of yours? How did you decide to do that? Tell that story real quick. I'll get, I'll, I won't get our pictures. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to, but I won't. Um, you can tell them. You did it though. I didn't want to. Oh, you didn't want to? What? Oh, that the wedding? Yeah. Mm. Because we wanted to support you. We we just thought it would be fun. <laughs> That's all. And then also we wanted to uh, include you guys to mm -hmm. our life. Mm -hmm. That's why it was really special. But yeah. I felt like we were stealing your thunder. Oh no, not at all. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. So we had already been married for a year, and and Hyun Jung ended up marrying an American. So it was really interesting because we thought, oh wow, that's so cool, you know. And so that's that's how everything kind of changed because mm -hmm. your English got mm -hmm. exponentially better. Mm -hmm. We went to Korea. We had a double wedding. Um, 
and it was really beautiful and interesting and fun and mm -hmm. had a good time. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to take your, I didn't want to be a bride because I was already married. But it was a really it's wonderful okay. experience. And actually, um, my husband, Jim, who's um, who's in the house somewhere. Oh, it's, this is. Yeah, we put the, I don't have you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was neat because my husband got to see Korea and then we ended up, if you ever do this, this is kind of, um, whether if you ever have an opportunity to do this, my husband and I went and we spent a week in Korea by ourselves. So we went and we hired this man named, um, Mr. Che, who's awesome, who I can recommend to you. But uh, he picked us up at the airport. He gave us like a tour of Korea and he got, and he took us to Holt where we held babies at Holt. It was awesome because all these little babies were going to be adopted. And I actually connected with one of the parents. Like I posted the pictures and one of the parents in the state said, oh, that's my baby. Yeah. I <laughs> so that was so cool. And now that was like, like 2009. So that was a long time ago. Um, so that was a really good way for Jim, my husband, to see Korea as a tourist and to see Holt and to see like my adoption story. And then after that, then we went and saw you and we spent a week with you. Oh. So if you ever have an opportunity to do it that way, if you have, if you come in, if you have, you know, if you encounter your birth family and you want to do it that way, I would say have a week to yourself and a week with your birth family, even though I could have had a week after that of relaxation. Too, you know, where we went to like change you or something. <laughs> um, okay, so let me go, let me get through all these. Um, Leah says, I just joined this live talk, but I'll definitely go back and watch the whole thing. I was adopted from Korea. I'm almost 35 next week. Happy early birthday. Just started to connect with other Korean adoptees, learn more about our common and unique experiences, and grow so much. Oh, Graham asked me, would you consider adopting a child? Oh, sorry. I was going back. Um, Ram said, would you consider adopting a child? I would. Would you? Maybe. Why? Just I, I'm not sure if I want to have a child or not now. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. But if I want a child, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Would you do, adopt a Korean child? Mm. That's me, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of want like the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So I want the easiest and the least expensive. I don't care, you know. I, w I would consider it. And actually, Jim and I, my husband and I have talked about it. But um, right now, I also really want a biological connection to my child. And not because I, I mean, I'm very... Uh, sometimes I get blasted because I'm really kind of pro adoption, you know? Um, so I love adoption. And I, for me, like I, I can't change anything about my life. I've accepted it and tried to embrace it. So um, I have no regrets. And um, I, it's easier for me to say that because look at what we have, you know, but, um, but at the same time for me to adopt, I don't know. I don't, I don't know yet. I, I really want to see what it's like to, have a child who might kind of look like me or my spouse. I have a question. That sounds silly, right? <laughs> okay, what's your question? Uh, uh, do you think um, growing up as a uh, Korean adoptees here and um, as a what's that, Korean American are different? Mm, yeah. How? But they're very similar. So I have a lot of friends who are Korean who have Korean Korean parents, um, and the the thing is, the expectations are different because mm -hmm. still Korean parents, no matter if you live in Korea or mm -hmm. the United States, seem to be very intense. Does okay. that make sense? Like you have to go to school, you have to get good grades, uh -huh. you have to play piano. <laughs> Those are all very stereotypical. But I mean, like all my friends who were who grew up with Korean parents. They grew up usually having to translate for their parents. Um, a lot of their parents, a lot of my friends are in like dry cleaning restaurants. Like the, those are the kind of businesses they owned. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, in some ways I couldn't connect with that because 
I didn't grow up that way. Like I didn't grow up still with kimchi in my house, you know, but at the same time, I would say our, the way we are perceived in the country is kind of similar. And I would, you know, because people would see, still see Asian faces mm -hmm. and we are still very, uh, I, I hate, you know, Americanized. I hate that word, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we're very Western. So mm -hmm. there are very, a lot of similarities, I think. But I actually used to be intimidated by all Asian people. So like I'm a, I'm a board member now of the Asian American Journalist Association here in Seattle. And I used, sometimes I didn't like going to like AAJ events, like nationally because I couldn't relate to any of those Asian kids, any of those Asian journalists. I felt like, because they all had Asian parents, like, like, didn't your parent, do you remember like your parents when they would make you, they would pack your lunch with kimchi and you'd be so disgusted because you didn't want to take it to school. And I would say, no, I don't remember that, you know, or, um, and I didn't know anything about like Korean culture. So it would always be like, Awkward. Do you want me to pet kimchi for your <laughs> No, I don't want to pet kimchi. I don't need to. I don't need to smell it. Actually, you know what though? I I love kimchi now. It's weird. You like cucumber kimchi? I like cucumber kimchi. Well, I like cabbage kimchi too. Okay. But I. But the thing is, I like cabbage kimchi with rice, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to cut out rice. <laughs> Let's see, let's try to get through some more questions and then we should probably go because we're close to an hour. Wow. Oh, Kimmy's, oh, Kimmy's in there. She says, I had the same feeling in college with the Korean Korean students. They did, didn't talk to me. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can go back. So basically we have this up here, but the, it's not really, sometimes it, the, the comments are not coming in mm. as well as they are, I think, on the, Petronia's in there. Hi. Okay. Um, did you have any racial issues when you started to date? Yes. Yes. So, uh, granted, I, so I started dating in the 90s, and um, I remember I had this boyfriend, and his parents actually said, we don't want you to date her. Oh, no. Because you could end up with half-breeds. That was oh. the word. Those were the words that they used. So. Mixed. Yeah, mixed kids. So, um, well, is it bad? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say it like that, it's bad. Okay. So usually, you know, the nice thing would be like, yeah, that just sounds that's derogatory. So, um, so that, and also, you know, some people don't. It's weird. Some people prefer Asian girls, and some people don't prefer Asian girls. So it's gross either way. I think when you're like object, mm -hmm. when someone's just automatically going to write you off for being Asian or totally dig you because you're Asian, the people who dig you because you're Asian are very creepy. No offense to anyone out there who might be watching, who might be digging. <laughs> Asian people. But I hate it. It's gross. You want someone to see you for you and not be objectified into this Asian stereotype. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you, I was explaining to you, like you have to watch out for people because some people are just totally into Asian women. And that's another thing that you need to have a conversation with with your children because it because it, it does happen and there are a lot of weird questions uh to objectify asian women have you ever experienced that just in general with like mm -hmm. potential friends or people who are interested in learning more about you that they're like interested in you because you're korean uh i don't know but when i was chatting with men here in my language app. In your language <laughs> app. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, they were like, I thought some of those guys were creepy. Remember? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like, no. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Oh, Joyce has twin daughters adopted from Korea. Their birth family was oh, intact nice. when they were placed. And that has caused more hurt and confusion. My wishes are they embrace that. Their Korean and American heritage. I hope they can connect with their birth family. Sadly, they have already lost their birth mom. Oh. You know, I thought I um I have had friends who have tried to reconnect with their birth mother and pretty sure that they located their birth mother and their birth mother did not want to see them 
you know, so that's heartbreaking. Um, it's interesting to see intact families and, um, and I was always worried that I would never see you guys again. Cause like something would happen, mm -hmm. like someone would die or get in a crash or I would die or something. I used to have that anxiety too. So is that weird? Mm -hmm. You know, when you live so far, but when you live so far away, I mean, you just have to think like when you're a kid and you know, you're adopted, like you kind of have this fairy tale in your head, like of who your birth mother could be, who you could have been. Like, so what did she imagine at the time? <laughs> I thought she, I thought my birth mother would be like young and beautiful <laughs> and like rich. I was like little orphan uh, Annie, but like the Asian version. Oh, you probably haven't seen Annie, have yeah. you? So I thought like you know, Annie is a is an. I'll show you Annie. Okay. Anyway, so I thought I was like little orphan Annie, and I thought my my birth parents must be just made a mistake and. You know they're 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 gorgeous and they're smart. They're probably rich now. And sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I saw when I saw our birth mother, she was just like a normal Number. looking mm -hmm. Asian, like a normal looking Ajuma. Ajuma, yeah. She had like you know the the really short Korean okay. hair, yeah, and perm, mm -hmm. and she just I was like, she was chubby. <laughs> it's true at the time, right? Yeah, but you're not supposed to say that. That's okay. Korean people say that. But she was, she was Ajumma, so. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> ajumma is okay for anything. Yeah. Just explain what an Ajumma is. Ajumma is not a man, not a woman. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we say that for older women. The third, the third sex, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, it's and like, Ajumma's are always, like, uh, for maybe a little frumpy and, like, mm -hmm. They look totally Asian. They don't <laughs> care anything. <laughs> She's okay. Do whatever they want. Oh my god. Yeah. So when I saw her, I was like, "Are you sure?" She's <laughs> my mother. But I also don't look like our mother. Oh, do you know what you think? Do you think I look like our mother? Oh no, no. You look like our father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially here. Here. He, gave, he gifted me some crazy eyebrows, so I should appreciate that. <laughs> so I had to get no, microblading. I don't think so. That's okay. That's fine. So let's move on. Um, okay, let's get through some of these and then... Oh, Kimmy says, I'm an Ajuma. No, you're not, for the record. I know you. Um, our adopted daughter... So Tom says, our adopted daughter feels like she's not just Asian, but identifies as white. I think that that's an honest... I think that's really honest. Because I always say, like... Um, well, like you're a Twinkie, like you're yellow on the outside, white on the inside. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I think if you're being honest, yeah. I mean, because being Korean for me is such a an effort. So that's kind of sad. You know, that part is kind of sad. But I wouldn't be who I am, you know. So, okay. Um... Do you look back at your childhood and wish you had more opportunities to visit Korea as a young child? We have three children from Korea. Mm -hmm. Latest one hasn't been home for two months yet. Wow. Um, you know, I would refer to an adoption specialist on that only because they see things more than I do. I mean, like when I went, I did it like all wrong. Like I was, I went to Korea when I was 18 and then I was like, boom, like just like Korea just like hit me in the face. You know, it's like all of a sudden it's like my first trip to Korea. Like, first of all, when you get off the plane, you know how it is. Like it's, you smell garlic and kimchi and everybody looks <laughs> the same. And you're like, what is this? The air is like thick, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah. and then so you have culture shock. And then on top of the fact that you go to like Holt and you see, you know, babies and you meet potentially like you could meet birth mothers or you could see foster mothers. You should see all this stuff. And then on top of that, you could meet birth family. It's like really overwhelming. That's not probably a wise way to do it. I have heard, and I don't know this for a fact, but I've heard that like, if you can afford it to take your kids to Korea when they're younger, a little bit younger to where they understand everything so that it gives them a little confidence. Mm -hmm. So one who, our sister's son, came to the United States this fall. He's how old? Uh, seven, I think. Yeah. Is he seven? Not I thought eight. he was older. Eight. Oh, 
Oh. A soon. So I think that gave him a lot of confidence. Oh, Don't yeah. you think? Mm -hmm. Because he's now he's like, I want to study in America, yeah. and, and he's 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 had this experience that none of his friends have had, a lot of most of his friends haven't had. Mm -hmm. He got yeah, to pretty cool. Yeah, and he's so observant. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember how, because the way you pronounce Seattle, he was like, why do you say it that way? Oh, yeah, it was really fun. So I was teaching him how to pronounce uh, letters, uh, uh, alphabet. So like, uh, so we are reading Seattle, like S-E-A-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. So look at that, S-E-C-A-T-L. -E and then he said Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I, I read Seattle, but... But he read Seattle. So he said it right. So he said it right. Mm -hmm. And you, he said that you didn't say it right. Right. Or something. No, he didn't say that, but he just followed you. Oh, he followed me. Yeah, not me. Oh. Yeah. Because everybody said Seattle. Yeah. So cute. Um, oh, Zach just said, just tuning in. So you guys are biological sisters that have recently come into contact. Yes. Yes and no. Yes, yes. We've been in contact for a while, but we this is the first time we've lived together. So... Kind of crazy. <gasps> Liz is in there. Hi, Liz. Oh my gosh. So, how old is Jack now, Liz? I think. Um. Oh, Don says we're blessed with a community of other Korean adoptees for our boys. We have an annual culture camp, an opportunity to spend a few days all together. I think it gives them a connection and a place of belonging. Did you have this? If not, would it have been helpful? So, this is just my opinion, Don. In my opinion only. But I really feel like being a part of Korean adoption camps as a kid helped me be a more confident Korean adoptee adult. I didn't realize that at the time, but I was saying earlier, it, what, like Korean people and Asian people as a young adult intimidated me, like even in my professional life, because I never felt Korean enough, Asian enough. Like I thought I was never enough, you know? So being at Korean heritage camps, I didn't really care about the culture. I really enjoyed meeting other Korean adoptees. And I was at a phase in my life where I was still like actually older than all the Korean campers. So I was like always like a junior counselor or something. Um, but that helped me realize that I was not the only one like me. Because even when you're hanging out with other Korean people, like you still realize that you're weird to them. And also some Korean people can't really accept adoptees. I think that's changed a little yeah. bit, right? Mm -hmm. But there are still many out there who maybe, I mean, clearly Korean adoptees are not fully accepted because there would be more adoptions in Korea if it was like, okay, maybe, right? Maybe. I don't want to speak for anybody. I'm just saying, I like there were times in my life when I would meet Korean people and they would ask me if I was adopted and I would say yes. And the next thing would be like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, which I would say, okay, it's okay. I'm okay. We're all okay, guys. Oh my gosh, Jack is seven. Um, let's see. Carrie says, if your nephew comes to US for college, you're going to need a bigger house. <laughs> yeah. Right, right? Oh my gosh. Dina, love you. Uh, Joseph says, great that life is treating you well. Oh, Joe Alderton from Missouri? Um, oh, he's taking Taekwondo now, says Liz. Oh, cool. Ah, Carrie says, you are enough. That's nice. So I think, I don't know, do you want to leave any, any, I think you should have the last words. Oh, come on, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Well, what do you, okay, so like there are a lot, so I've said this before, but there are a lot of siblings up, a lot of people out there who know they have, who probably wonder if they have siblings, mm -hmm. right? Like almost everyone I know is never the only child. They always, almost always have siblings. In Korea? Yeah. I mean, every adoptee, everyone like me. Oh. They're like almost never the only child. They almost always have biological siblings. I'm not sure about that. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, if you you are a single mom, maybe you can, you know, give your daughter away or mm -hmm. something. So. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? Oh gosh, I don't. 
know. I don't know what to even ask. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You, that makes sense because, yeah, so you um, giving away the child and then probably you get married again and then have another kid. Another family. Mm, that's why, yeah. yeah. And sometimes they don't even tell their husband that they had had. Usually don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you think this was a good experience for you? I mean, like meeting me and like, are you glad that we met? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you think that, um, I don't know. I just kind of think like huh, the impression that you have of adoption, because I always said like, it's not easy for, it's not easy for biological siblings either to have their whole life kind of changed too. Does that make sense? Like as an adoptee, we put a lot of stress on like how the adoptee feels and how like our birth parents feel and how our parents feel. But like everything in your life, I mean, not everything, but a lot of things in your life changed because like you found out your parents had this secret. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I'm still, um, so I don't feel like I'm, um, between you and my parents, so I feel like I'm still, you know, watching you guys, <laughs> like drama, <laughs> like the third person, you know, as a third person. So I don't know what to say. Do you feel? Did you feel? Uh, did you feel like we were related? Oh well, yeah. Really? How? Well, because um. You know, we found a, a lot of in common. So at the time, I think, oh, she's really my sister. You know? Really? Can you, you know? think of an example? Well, like you, you love to cook. Mm -hmm. We love to cook, right? Mm -hmm. And then also, I think we are creative mm -hmm. and like to do something new, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that I found shocking was that when we were in uh the kitchen one day you the first time you said oh that is like our mother I, you probably don't remember but mm -hmm. i remember it because mm -hmm. i was like it had never occurred to me that like i could be like you or like our mother or i just thought it was me Do you, so that's why i think it's really interesting to hear your perspective because mm, you can I say see, you can say things like oh you're like that's like our father and yeah. like the way you sing sing and the way you laugh, the way you dance. <laughs> you know, it's like our mother. Some, yeah, makes some noises. She's yeah. really loud, that's mm -hmm. why. Shoot. It's just playful. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Dina and says great storyteller. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, Dina says, does she remember her parents telling them about you? Yeah, you do. Yeah. You got a phone call from our sister. Did our parents ever say anything? About what? About me. Like, were they ever like, we're sorry we lied. We're sorry we kept this a secret. No, they don't talk like that yeah. to your, to their kids, you know. We don't talk. Korean people or your family? Our family. So our mother never said, like, I made a mistake or, like. No. No. Yeah. I'm sure that uh, she thinks like that, but she won't say that to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though. So she says that, and but you're you guys used to really send these really beautiful letters to me when I would when you first found out about me. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. And they were very like heartfelt and like emotional. I should read those sometime. Not today. I've already cried enough. Um, I think. Let's see. Let me just go through these, and then we, we should end it because we went thirty minutes over. Um, Jennifer says thank you. All right. That was nice. I'm not going to read all that because it was nice. Um, Kara says, I was blessed to go to a Korean culture camp in Minneapolis. Minneapolis has the largest Korean population, I think, in the yeah. world. Yeah. Um, so it was neat to see other people who look like me. Yep, yep, yep. I am wanting to do a search for my foster family. They started my life in a loving family, and I know that made the difference for me. Foster families are amazing humans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, there's so much more that we could like say, but we've taken up a, a lot of time and, um, 
Next, <laughs> next time, I think you should make some questions. So let me prepare, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I don't like this angle. <laughs> Which one? Why? It's like a fish eye, you know. What? Yeah, but it's it's better than the other one because our heads were like right up here. Okay. We have a wide angle lens on this, and without it, like we were like this close. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Well, if you guys ask any more questions, we'll answer that. We'll go back and answer. And also, thanks so much for Holt for letting us do this. And I know we didn't really get, we just kind of talked. So, mm -hmm. like I said, it was casual, but. Um, so maybe we'll, think, we'll um, come back. I wrote something here, so maybe I can share this. Okay. Oh. Okay. No. Oh, now? No. Oh, not. later. <laughs> I thought you were gonna do it now. Oh, it's too long. Oh, it's too long. Yeah. Maybe we should write it. Maybe we should do a video or something. Mm -hmm. You're so brave. Okay. Okay, um, thank you so much. We're going to go, and thank you for sticking around for the extra 25 minutes, but we'll let you go. And thank you, Hyun Jung. Thank you. You feel okay? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Of All course. right. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.